My name is Daryl Barnes and I am a rockhound fossil nerd from back in the day. And so years ago I found this little cosmetic case in the garbage and I thought this would be great for my fossil collection. So I'm going to show you some of my fossils. And one of the ones that you can kind of see really close is the back side of a trilobite. This was like an underwater cockroach back in the day and I collected this in Oklahoma. This is a little shell that I collected in Jackson, Mississippi, Turritella. These are fossil shark teeth that I collected in Mississippi in the streams here. This used to be a shallow, warm ocean in Mississippi. And I wrote sand shark on that, even though I, they're probably goblin sharks. Here's some other examples of, I think this is Chesapectin here, are some shells that I found near Jackson, Mississippi, which also used to be under a shallow ocean. This one is called a Terebra. And I, I ID'd these years ago, so these may or may not be exactly correct, but this is what I have at this point. These are kind of neat because I collected these in, I collected these in New York State. And these are favocytes. These were a type of what's called a honeycomb coral. And back when I was a kid, I found these. Actually, I think my family had stopped off at the side of the road to go to the bathroom and I was exploring and found those. Some other neat local fossils are crinoids. These were under, underwater sea lily-like things. They had a long slender stalk with a little kind of an octopus head on them. And these kind of went ex extinct along with these trilobites that I was telling you about, these underwater cockroaches. This is kind of cool right here because this is a ray tooth and if you listen, it's kind of scratchy. And so these were things that ground food for their nutrition. Stingray, fossil stingray. Here's a little bit of petrified wood. You can kind of see the, the wood grain slightly in that fossil. Now, this is a little bit more of a professional version of a trilobite. Someone gave me this one, but this is a, I think it's a king trilobite possibly, but you can really get the, the picture of the fact that these look like underwater cockroaches. And it kind of, my theory on these is that there used to be more oxygenation on our planet, and it makes me wonder if when the oxygenation level on our planet changed, if this is what caused the death of some of these species that were very ubiquitous. This is a mold of a clam. You can kind of see that. That came from near Jackson, Mississippi, and that basically is a limestone relic. Okay, this is just another piece of Mississippi heritage. This is a piece of pottery, uh, Native American pottery possibly collected. I believe this was collected in a... This was collected in a field, I think near Greenville, Mississippi. You know, a farmer had plowed a field and we began founding, finding some of these relics. That's the blackened inside of a a pot, Native American pot from centuries ago. This area was habited by Chickasaw people. This is kind of a neat one, look at this. This is what's called a sea biscuit. It's kind of like, uh, almost like a sea star and you can see the, the markings on the top of it. That's a, another Mississippi fossil. I have another whole entire bag full of crinoid stems. These came from Gadsden, Alabama off the side of the road years ago. A friend of mine sent, brought me this from Texas. I thought this was pretty cool. And if you look at this long leaf that's embedded in this rock, it looks kind of like a eucalyptus leaf from what I can identify it as. I thought that's pretty cool. Yes, ma'am. How do you remember where all this stuff from? Is it written down? Well, some of it, I do have some cheat notes here, but the truth is uh, I'm like a nerd on this stuff. You know, you don't have to force me to memorize this stuff. You have stuff like that in your life that you can remember. 
This one, hard to believe this shell right here came from Tupelo, Mississippi on the side of the road. Uh, North Mississippi used to be a shallow, warm ocean. Crazy. That's a that's basically a fossil, even though it looks like a, an extant living oyster shell. Here is a larger version of that favus site I was showing you, that honeycomb coral that I was showing you a minute ago. Those were other smaller pieces, and if you look really close at it, you can actually see a crystalline structure inside. It's really kind of pretty, kind of up close. see I have a few other assorted things here's another this one almost looks like an elm leaf you can see the the little stem to the leaf and uh, the leaf itself PDO in the leaf that's kind of cool so what's kind of interesting is a lot of the fossils that we have now are things that are still alive there's another one that looks kind of like an elm leaf it kind of has that jagged serrated edge to it possibly a friend of mine gave brought these to me from texas a long time ago a couple more corals look at, you see the delicate detail imprint of this coral and here that's just another favorite site right there so any place that there was under shallow Oceans that had limestone deposits, you can find fossils almost anywhere. And even on top of high mountains in the whole entire world, you can find fossils. So uh, keep on doing all the good things you do. Keep coming back. Subscribe to Daryl Barnes' Science and Nature Channel.